What's up everyone? Been trying to figure out how to do a video like this for forever. I put up a couple. Uh, they weren't well received just because of how they were being searched out. So for what I was doing, I've, I've taken them down for now. So I thought I wanted to, I, I, in my mind, uh, I wanted to get here and what got me excited about perfumery and what changed my mindset on perfumery and different things. And I remember when I slowly changed from that $3,000 order I always talk about of the popular fragrances and what's out there versus I went and bought ingredients instead and went crazy on, on all of that. It's something I've been into forever. And in the channel, you, you see me going through all the kind of popular fragrances in a different way, not owning the bottles, thank God. And then so I got back in perfumery heavily, almost did this $3,000 order on, uh, and this is all discounted at like dirt cheap off and all the top 10 lists of everybody combined out there. I wish I would have compiled the data and, and took the time to, extra time to do that. Basically, how many people put this same fragrance is in their top 10. And because I just wanted to see as a conglomerate the, the best compositions of what people think. That was, that's my study. That's what I was doing. So instead of doing that, I slept over the weekend and I'm like, that's, I really don't love these fragrances. I kind of know that. They smell kind of all the same, especially from house to house. Each house has its own accord. I talk about this all the time on the channel. And then you pick the ingredients in the house. So instead, I went down a different path. I, I bought a bunch of ingredients on my own. Um, thanks to channels out there talking about ingredients. I talked about them in my first video ever or second video ever. Here we are. This journey's led me here. I've learned so much in the last three months because I've had to be, be patient on my tinctures, which I, I didn't know. When I started, I thought I was going to have my sense in six weeks. Now I'm learning a couple of my core scents are going to take a year to, to even get to. And I'm like, this is, everything's taking longer than I thought. So um, I'm learning. Uh, people are helping me. People are talking to me. Amazing community, meeting some amazing friends. So here's me. What I first got into, this is kind of what I'm sharing in this video, and, and maybe I'll, I'll advance and share more if this gets well received and whatnot. Uh, so I'm titling this the seven ingredients that um, if, if you're into perfumery, this will enhance your experience. This will enhance everything uh, you're doing kind of thing, or it has for me. It's what did it for me. I'm just sharing that seven ingredients that to get you started in. Uh, affordably that will enhance your perfume experience. So let's see how this goes. Sorry for this. It's, this is just going to be a talk kind of thing. I'm still going to intro it so I can do my thumbnail and transition. I actually just put a macadamia cashew milk uh, chai tea on. I'm going to go grab that. You stay tuned. We'll be back and get into these ingredients. All right, guys, got, got the chai tea. I got my seven ingredients laid out here and I didn't dig into my special cabinet. These, these are cheap ingredients that you guys can go get, including, I'm gonna show you a couple ouds that I started with that I'll never use, but educationally, it's been just genius for me to learn about the oud oil that I was talking about. This, I'm showing you where I started these are not luckily I, I bought some better stuff and it's changed forever you can, it's documented well on the channel i hope this works out i'm going to be talking off subject here i'm not on a format which works better for me that's why i'm so constrictive in my other videos i have to be on the format you even see me go off sometimes in there and i'm just like format brings me back no format here today easy talk talking about my seven ingredients I'm enjoying my tea. Um, I'm releasing this. I'm filming today, tomorrow. I very rarely do that as I'm sitting on, I think, 20 videos right now. 
I come in every morning and just do a perfume review. I basically wear one throughout the day, kind of take notes through my day throughout it, finish it at night, and then come film it in the morning kind of thing. And that's what, and again, that's why you're not seeing my bomb bomb perfumes because uh, if they're bomb perfumes, I mean, I have, if I'm going to put a score of 90 on the channel, I, I just, I'm holding myself accountable. I have to have five warnings of that, that, that thing. And just to make sure it evolves, changes, and whatnot. Which gets me into my yesterday fragrance. Um, I'm not able to review that today because that thing, it started off. Here, let's get into this. First ingredient, sandalwood. So, four bucks, guys. You guys can go get this. This is Jifco sandalwood, one of the main synthetic sandalwoods out there. Uh, I got this on Perfumers Apprentice. It's G-I-V-C-O 2003 and sandalwood. It's four or six bucks. It just gives you such a great ed education. I sprayed this perfume on yesterday and I'm like, ugh, fake sandalwood, are you kidding me? It says my on it, right? I'm excited, it's kind of expensive, so I'm, I'm expecting, I don't know the brand, but right off, I'm like, this smells, the top just, it was popcorn-y without the salt. I'm like, I'm gonna smell this for eight hours. 45 minutes in, this one of those perfumes that changed my day. I was like, what is this? This, I mean, it's it's like top 10 kind of experience perfume for me. And with that, so now I can't review that. I won't, I won't review that when I say top 10. Now we'll see if that sticks. It's got to go through four more wearings and whatnot. I wear these flannel shirts on purpose, so there's other scents that stick to them. It could have been mixing with those. As I get more serious with that, I mean, I'll make sure I have short sleeves on, that kind of thing. I'll work out high heat. We'll test on this. I want to put a good score on it. So anyways, learning this ingredient right here it is night and day. And then you take um, even this. So this is a cheaper one right here. Even even this, this is good sandalwood right here. It, very good sandalwood. You put this one on one arm, put the synthetic on the other arm, even for hour, hour and a half. <laughs> the natural, uh, they start off the same and you're like, oh, these are good. Yeah, they're both, both sandalwood. Smell them from the bottle, decent smell. But as you wear the, how real sandalwood works with your skin chemistry, gives you such an education. It changes with your skin. It helps your mood. It, 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 it's just different. It's why we wear perfume. It's why we seek out good perfumes. This is where I got how I am when I talk about from naturals to synthetics and not want that lean, linear smell on my skin. Just because I've learned that there's more dynamic ingredients. And this is how I learned. This is from John Still. This is a Hawaiian sandalwood right here. And it has its own nuances, lets you learn a little bit deeper. This 3ML, I mean, it's this, this is a little more money. This is probably like 20, 30 bucks alone. Not as much butter, but just more, a little bit grassy. Soft, cedarish, a touch of the grass in there. It, it's just different. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's got its own nuances. To, to, and, and then, I mean, this... Three mil will last you forever. Not if you're creating perfume, but as a personal ingredient. And this is enjoyable to just open and sniff. All the real ones are enjoyable. The synthetics, yeah, they're in, but there's something about the naturals that just give you this deep sniff. To me, to a lot of people, you hear a lot of people talk, especially sandal and oud and ambergris, vetiver, <laughs> patchouli, all of them. They're good to smell. And yeah, just put little swipes on it, see how, how your skin reacts to it. it. On your pulse points especially, you see I've done videos with the wrist. Get that pulse point, it heats up the oil just slightly and it changes from that. It'll change from one person to the next based on body heat. Um, where did I get this? This is Mysore. My best sandalwoods are put away. Best oods are put away. I'm not, that's not the point of this video. This one, this might be from the Phil Oud company. I'm not positive. 
but if you haven't smelled a real Mysore, it's worth owning. It, it, I mean, I have three ml. It's even 0 0.03 ml. The little samples I have uh, in SARS 0 0.03 of his uh, Central Royale. It's worth just owning that. That was like 30 bucks. I mean, it's worth owning that for the rest of your life. The, the smell you get. I'm, I'm serious. Sharing my experiences. That's how deep and medicinal the smells are. And you can open up anytime you want to. And even that 0 0.03, the littlest drop, you can get so much aroma from on your skin. It's just nice. And, and that. And then um, this is another Mysore uh, sandalwood from Etsy. Just somewhere on Etsy. If I see Mysore for a cheap price, I'll buy it just to see what they are. Because I'm definitely seeking, uh, obviously, for to use in perfumery. This one's not as good as the other one. This is more of, it's got like a metallic touch on it. I don't know why. I don't know enough of how, if the distillation matters in sandalwood like it does in ouds. Uh, like it ouds if it's copper. And yeah, I don't know with the distillations, whether or not the uh, they uh, distill with metal or not, because that can add profiles to the oil. This one smells just like it was distilled in a metal pot. It's like my guess. Definitely has a different smell on it. The other one smells like a lot of my sores that I've uh, smelled. All right, sandalwood. So that's one ingredient. Just get your hands on some sandalwood. Uh, perfumers apprentice and creating perfumes start there and then um, with Mysore I mean just somebody reputable I, I was just went on Insar's site before this and he doesn't even have the sandalwood section on there he sells out quick on the stuff he does the Phil Oud guys I, some of their stuff they're expensive on Etsy you can search Mysore sandalwood a lot of people are selling it I think Rising Phoenix and Maleficent. I don't remember her name. I think I keep saying the Disney character's name uh, other than what her name is. I'll, if I remember, I'll try to put it in the notes. I'm so bad, I say that, and I'm so busy at this stuff and have a routine that, that I forget to go back and put it in the notes, but I'll try. But research of my source sandalwood. You guys want your nose on that. Get the synthetic one just so you guys know, so you know what's in your perfumes. And especially when you're paying for it and you're like, this is not real sandalwood. And this was four bucks an ML. It's good to know. My next ingredient is patchouli. If you watched my channel at all, I just went through a huge patchouli lesson. I focused on it. And I took about 15 to 20 perfumes that were patchouli focused or had patchouli in them. And that above and beyond patchouli, that gave me such a lesson on compositions and how people just copy each other, how perfumers really get stuck in a box and use the same formula and then kind of add little notes after that patchouli and vanilla is just the most overused combo I've ever seen with a citrus top. Any citrus top, it's just like almost everybody has that combination. I guess if, if when, and I, I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, the, the, where I could pin a point, point it back to earliest, at least perfected with the, 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 the sweet also, not just citrus, a sweet on top and the vanilla on the bottom and the patchouli in the middle is Mugler. Uh, what he did with uh, Amen. So that, that then I, I did a video on it and everything gave him full credit. I used the pure malt version. It take, take a Mugler and then add your notes and you, you basically, it's all built around the sweet patchouli sharpness and then sweet. And then with his other notes that he puts in all of his flankers. This one, um, another John Still, he's on the Creating Perfumes or the uh, Perfumer's Apprentice. He's on one of those. He resells them. You can research John Still. He's out of California. He sells through His oils are amazing. That whenever I saw him on the site, I think it's a Perfumer's Apprentice, honestly. I, I think it is. 
remembering the site. This was eight months ago when I when I bought through that site. And now I'm buying more from Eastern people. Right now I've I've chosen my ouds, and I've chosen a couple other ingredients. I'm tincturing some ingredients, and now I'm trying to find a, a source for like a patchouli. So I've ordered from many many sources. And when I do and use it, I'll, I'll I'll be transparent and show you guys. But right now, I mean, to, this has got the full sharpness that you're used to. Again, if you have the synthetic patchouli, I do I have a big jar of it somewhere because I thought I was going to use it like crazy. <laughs> so I, I have a couple big jars of synthetics that just I wasted my money on. They're sitting here. I. I don't know if I want to even mess and decant and ship, but I really don't want to mess with all that mess. This is uh, close to the synthetic patchouli that's in a lot of them. If you take the synthetic here, take the real stuff here, this one, the synthetic one's not going to change. 10 hours, it's just going to be there. And then if you add your ISO E Super Umbrox into it, ugh, it's just going to be amplified by the ISO E or Ambroxan's gun on uh, my skin will turn it into this Irish spring mess that I can't stand. That's Ambroxan um, acts on my skin different than anybody else's. It, as soon as it's on my skin, it takes over, it takes over every other note and just turns them into a soap with the other notes barely being anything underneath in that soap. Patchouli makes it smell like Irish spring to me. Even though I, I, I went and researched Irish spring ingredients, I couldn't find Ambroxan or patchouli listed but all these companies get to hide all their fragrance stuff under u.s laws which is shouldn't happen anyways this isn't a rant so we got this get the synthetic one again of it uh clearwood is my favorite uh synthetic i actually like that it's it's a mix between all natural and synthetic and it has a way easier palette on my nose, uh, so to say, then um, I don't know the name of the other, that's the one thing I couldn't get for this video. I don't even know where it is, honestly. Cause yeah, I, I, I don't know where my synthetic patchouli is. And then I bought uh, right here, this is a, uh, from the same an Etsy shop. You know, I researched patchouli. This is 1992, so an aged Indian. Probably only paid like 12 bucks for this. And for my education, totally worth it. All of a sudden, this is just a soft, doesn't have that real soft edge to it. It's taken out by the Asian of it. That's why I'm really getting into aging my perfumes. I already have like three of my favorite perfumes are better because of age. Oh, this is this is just a beautiful smell. It's patchouli, but I, same with like a bourbon, your wine. All the notes just mellow out and become relaxed in something different, something mellower. It's fruity. It's a fruity citrus. It's got its own top. This patchouli has its own top. It's a fruity citrus top with just that sh barely, not the sharp that we punch that you're used to, but um, like if you were, you were playing keys, it would be like three levels lower instead of that sharp. So you get the top fruity, whatever. But on your skin, those just balance, change in and out with the heat of your skin where the synthetic is just the same. It doesn't do that. And I, I literally have 10 more uh, oils that I bought from different regions. I own 15. So here's two. I have my other one here. I have, the big, I have a big organic bottle of it. I'll show you. Well, it's actually this stuff. And I have a bigger bottle of the same stuff right here. So that, and it's organic form. And this, this is definitely, you can't, can't tell the age. It's a fresh, fresh, you don't get the fruity, it, more of an earthy grass freshiness. And then that patchouli sharpness that you get. But again, on your skin, it just 
wears up and down a lot better. Uh, definitely the, the fresh, a lot fresher than age. This is cheap. This is a good one to get. Just uh, again, synthetic, real. This isn't my favorite floral, but if you're gonna start a lesson on, on perfumery or get to know notes in perfumery, really associate yourself with uh, a rose. This is an absolute. So you have different extractions. You can look at different places for that. Maybe we'll do a video on extraction. You have CO2, absolute essential oil. It's just basically the way they pull out the uh, oil from the flower and they all three have different smells. Uh, a lot of people think that absolute has the best smell. CO2 gives off a different vibe. This is, this is expensive, but worth owning. This changed rose for me forever. This one, still, still from John Still, again. This is, yeah, an absolute organic from, uh, it's a turkey red rose. It's so much more depth than your, even the red rose you're used to in spring. This just brings so much more depth to the nose than this. Definitely worth picking up and putting your nose on it. This is only 1.5 ml. I, if I, you guys are going to have to do the price research, I didn't do that for this video. This video's point is just, and I'm not even telling you where to buy it. Like I'm, I'm just telling you, go get your uh, nose on these seven notes wherever. There's tons and tons of places to buy these. At uh, the two places I started with creating perfumes, Perfumers Press, I only mentioned those because they'll basically cover all seven of these easy. Um, I have found. Each of these seven areas I've personally found um, better uh, ingredients that I like in all areas of these than those two sites. And then that's fine. Those two sites have to sell to a big mass market and that's what they're meant for. I know perfumers, they start there, they get their perfumes launched and then they start, um, the ones that are doing natural start working up their naturals. I've talked to perfumers that have done that themselves. And I totally get it because that's, I mean, I started there and now I'm finding better uh, ingredients. So he does a rose water. I think this is pretty affordable. This is four ounces, so it's diluted in water, but it gives you the essence of a, what rose can do. Great for, this is just great for wearing alone. And just, it barely has an essence of rose. There's so probably so little rose in this. It's crazy. It was pretty affordable from what, what I remember, but it just gives you, it lets you know what the, this changed rose for me forever. It, <laughs> I was used to that red rose and everything growing up. My grandma loved rose. She bought everything rose. So, but it was all the same smell. Knowing these ingredients, there's so much more depth and so much more love. I talked about it in uh, Malik Al Tayef review. Uh, the Tayef rose, it just there's so much depth the rose can give in perfumery. It's got such a boldness that needs tamed. And if tamed right, its uses in perfumery are just magical. What it can do to top heart and base, it can affect the whole perfume if done right or ruin the whole perfume. You have perfumes where it grows, just takes over. So there's that. That, that's a, a good one. These, yeah, again, this was creating perfumes. Anything John Still creating perfumes. Next ingredient, vetiver. Get to know real vetiver. So, the nature's one was from like bulk apothecary, somewhere like that. I'm, I'm really trying to have something that's 100% organic. Um, so I, I use them, I think. I think it was bulk apothecary for anything that I'm showing with the natures on it. <laughs> if you have any perfume with vetiver in it, spray the perfume on one arm, put this vetiver on the other. It'll change what you, you think about vetiver and, and what the ingredient is. I, my ruse cuss is in the, 
I, I, I said I wouldn't go in there in my expensive oils. I do. That's, I think it was $40. It's a thicker one. It's an Indian vetiver, Rukas. Um, I bought that. That's also, if you're going down the vetiver road at all, that's a must to put your nose on. It really is a must. It's another medicinal ingredient that just has so many natural healthy benefits that in Western culture we aren't familiar with. In perfumery, you know, you know your gray vetiver. You know every line has a vetiver. So if you if you have a vetiver perfume in your collection, use that. Or buy the synthetic. I don't own the synthetic of, of vetiver. It wasn't a note I was focusing on until recently, until I learned what it did. Um, I'm replacing my lemongrass with uh, vetiver. So that's that's how I got into vetiver. Because it still gives off the top of lemongrass, but has so much more depth in life into uh, a base of the ingredient. So all, all of a sudden, I'm still getting my lemongrass effect and adding a base at the same time with with tons of earthy grassy depth and vetivers come from all different regions you know, all different effects from them same as any other oil i have from the john still i have his atar i tried to buy any of these ingredients that he has i would buy from him i really trust the john still um Everything I have from him. I have about 20 bottles here of, of different things. So if there's an ingredient and he's extracted it, I, I trust this guy a lot. And I'll, I'll go buy it the littlest he has just for a sample to see what it is. That's what I recommend. This is way more grassy, way more earthy and yummy. Not as uh, the lemon, not as much lemongrass off the top on this one, but yummy. All right, are we gonna do this next? Oud. So I'll show you the first ouds that, that I started buying. And this is, again, uh, everybody mentioned oud wood and doing their dances around all these things called oud. So I started buying oud off of Amazon. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I have a lot of advanced oud guys following me. This is, this is where I started, I'm just being honest. Uh, I've come a long, long way. For education reasons, I, I still appreciate the education of it. I'll never put this on my skin or use it, but to smell it and see what people are doing, it 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 smells. It says a tar mood. They're using something to over. I I wouldn't. I don't even know how much it is in this. This is 2.5 ml. I mean, I wouldn't even think 20% of this is real oud in this. And they totally make it sound like it, Miracle Botanicals. And they sell other reputable stuff on there, but I wouldn't say any of it is. Here we go, and then this was another Amazon. Look how little they make this. Check that out. This is Amazon. Yeah. So, and then you gotta go to the side. Look, you got, look, I mean, The, online they make it sound like oud when you get the bottle and look up front when I'm, after I'm like go back and research and know what oud is 100% pure essential oil and then they get away with calling it agarwood oil so it's it's I, I my guess is it has no uh, oud in it no effect the trees weren't affected that um, if they are using the real tree, they're just using the white part, and, and that's what it is. It has a decent smell to it. Um, they say this is 100% pure. It smells like some perfume top on it. I don't, I don't even think this is pure wood oil on, on here. How Amazon allows this stuff, I don't know. From what, I mean, I own over 50 oods now, and this is one of the biggest ripoffs I own. Amazon.com. It, it, yeah, there's something perfumey in it, for sure. It, it, I, I have almost 500 oils, probably more. Oh, who knows? I'm approaching that. But um, 
it just doesn't even smell like an oil. It smells like a perfume. It's off. I have a few other uh, ouds that I bought that, that are like this, but that, that's where we're at. Now this, uh, from Creating Perfume, check this out. Told a different story. They, they say this is agarwood. It's like an agarwood sap. This is a great affordable place to start to just, if you don't want no funk of the oud, and start learning about the tree itself. This has got like a sweet labdanum resinous kind of feel to it for me. It, it's a CO2 of the agarwood. And I mean, it's just, you see that? Check that out. I don't, can we get that before it dips off? Look at that luscious syrup. This is beautiful stuff um, for, for its price. I mean, it's, it's definitely not oud. It doesn't call itself oud. It's an agarwood CO2 extract. Again, I think it's from the white wood of the tree when, when they call it agarwood. Um, it, it's got a smell to it. Not at the barn, no barnyard at all. It's sweet, sappy, not piney yet, but leaning towards that way. Tree mossy a bit, labdanum, resinous. It's a beautiful alternative to have for base resin, for sure, in that. And then I'll show you the last. <laughs> I pulled this one out too, another Amazon. I have some that are so watered down that I I said I might make a video of them. We'll see. This was another Amazon one. This is called Agarwood Oil, pure and natural, it says. Let's see, it's got a little cap on it. <laughs> if that's, if that's oud, it, it's pure white. It, it's got to be from the tree, which at least it's not perfumey like the other one. It's one of the basic, widest wood smells, which uh, definitely could be a use for it. But they, if I remember right, I this was priced pretty. All right, I didn't even realize how long this video was taken. I thought I could be through this a little bit quicker. Um, I think my camera it, it is newer but it's heavily 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 used um i don't know if it heated up or whatnot um but it just cut off the video and corrupted the file afterwards so i left off uh ending with the oud oil um just a nice white tree oil on that one and we're just going to fly through these next two videos because we're already over 30 minutes i apologize for that I'm showing you a lot of variety, showing you seven oils to get started with. Hope this helps you guys. Anyways, I'm just getting set back into this. Ambergris is the next one. Ambergris is a funky one for me. The synthetic one, I don't care for at all. It does funky stuff on my skin. It might be because ambroxan is used with it heavily and, and the two don't mix that well. That's my guess. I really don't know for sure. This is the... Uh, synthetic that you can buy at Perfumer's Apprentice. The top smell, the smell from the bottle is almost everything I want from an ambergris. Again, it's just linear, doesn't uh, mix with it. Check this stuff out. This is a white gold from the same company. I mean, my suggestion is, is definitely the Perfumer's Apprentice. They still have this. They run out in and out of it a lot because so many people want this ingredient, it's 3% tinctured, or you can buy the raw stuff. I have the raw stuff too. And the tincture stuff, there's really no smell to it. The raw stuff has, the white gold has a very, there's a little bit, but you get a lot of alcohol smell in it with the tincture. The um, raw stuff, white gold is very subtle smell. Um, I have a black and a white gold and a gold. It, they're all three very, very, very different. Um, my thoughts with ambergris, buy the Perfumers Apprentice ones and just put a swipe on your skin. I show videos of putting swipes on your wrist. If you have even a, a toothpick or a glass dabber and you just dip it in, put a swipe on and then either put an equal swipe of another oil on whatever oil, rose, sandalwood, whatever oil we're talking about, or if you already have some, and just see the difference it makes. 
Ambergris whole purpose in perfumery is to literally carry the notes. Any note you're having, carry it. And, and it, it, Ambergris is <laughs> basically carrying on waves to be picked up on the shore. It's exactly what it does to other notes. It car it's like a wave carrying notes to, to what it is. There's debate on whether what end of the sperm wall it comes out of. It comes out one of the ends and comes out in um, chunks or a big blob, gooey, waxy blob caused from those. Uh, again, I've, I've, re I've read a lot of ambergris. There's two different reports on what the well's eating. The most uh, agreed upon is squid beaks getting caught in the digestive tract. And then slowly over time, a waxy like substance builds up over it, creating the balls that you see pictures of that's either comes out of one of the ends. Nobody's sure on that either. And then gets carried uh, on the ocean. The longer it sits in the sun on that ocean, the more wider in color it becomes, and the more of the, the flavor and aroma it, it retains, the more valuable it is. So that's kind of how it, I, I'm not an expert here, but white to black is kind of what we're, we're thinking here. So I have black and the white, way different smells on, on what, the, what they do. The black, I'd say, is way more muddyish, just different smell. The white, way more um, clean, ozonic. I mentioned that I wanted ozonic smells and naturals. Here's where you start to get them from. And uh, sea-like, salt-like, it just picks up all that nice oceanic wonder seashell a little bit to me. I can pick up some of that just wonder into its substance. I 20 years ago when I was young, I used to make fun of all the girls. I, I thought every one of the perfumes had uh, well sperm. I used to say well sperm. Oh, you're wearing sperm from wells in it. Uh -huh. Did not, uneducated, whatever. And now I just uh, wish I knew about this ingredient a lot sooner and, and what it does. <coughs> the point of this video is to get your hands on it and use it in what you're doing. I also have a uh, white gold with saffron tincture. This one um, doesn't say what the tincture level is. You can, um, has color to it, I'm sure, from the saffron. The sniff on this is just elegant. So you can really tell what the ambergris does in the saffron, just brings it to life and adds that whole, whole wonder to it. Point is, is get the synthetic, learn what, again, if somebody's charging four bucks an ML or whatnot, and they're putting that synthetic in there, that synthetic's cheap. You can see the price difference for yourselves when you buy this stuff. And then when you have the, even get the tinctured one, I suggest get it already tinctured so you don't have to mess around with that. Do a swipe with your favorite perfume, just, just on one arm and see what it adds to the perfume just to learn. That's, that's how I've learned. It's literally like an ocean that carries your perfume to new levels that, that it hasn't been before. That's ambergris for you. That, that's what I have. That's where I'm at in my experience of it. I'm really trying to uh, tincture my own and get my hands on some. I've been on the hunt. I know exactly what I want. I've been on the hunt for it. it just the price and everything hasn't lined up uh, yet. But um, yeah, it's an ingredient. I chose oud first, but ambergris is definitely one that will be in my arsenal also. What I'm doing. Last ingredient is vanilla. I have a vanilla powder that um, is just this super sweet powder. If you, I forget what video it is. I talk, I think it's the kerosene video. I talk about what happened to me when I bought that. I wasn't able to pick up the package at my house. I was gone. Went to the FedEx shop, and the whole shop smelled of these powders. And the lady was like, "Oh, you're the one." Talk to the other worker. You're the one that made her place smell so good. I don't think everybody's happy. Anyways, long story short, brought it here. It blew up this studio where I couldn't even walk in and breathe. I put it in 10 layers of Ziplocs and baggies and tape. That still didn't work. It breathed through all that. I, I get plastics, not 100% syllable. Um, I read up on what to do. Uh, people have special fridges for this stuff. 
I put it in the bottom of my fridge in the drawer with stuff on top. That works. It hasn't blown up my fridge, so it's tamed. Anyways, the, there's a lot of different vanillas you can play with. The, the synthetic, dirt cheap, if, if you just want to see if your perfume's using this or no for an education, but you can get into, now you can get into Tahitian ones. Here's the John Still again. Tahitian, vanilla, Madagascar vanilla, different nuances from different regions. Hawaiian vanilla. Uh, is this the one? Man, this stuff is just, that's basically its only ingredient in there. So good. It, it, very light and airy. Where you're Madagascar, a lot of people are familiar with that. It's just dark and sweeter. Uh, uh, Sylvain de Corte, hope I said that right, right, is my most favorite vanilla base layer that, that I know of used in perfumery. I believe she was a perfumer with uh, Guerlain and now is running in her own house. Give me any six of those flavors of vanilla she came up with. The dry down is just divine on my skin. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I think she used the Madagascar. She did not want to use the synthetic and had to hunt down a natural that she was for the smell that she was after. That, that's an ingredient you should get used to. Uh, for your gourmands, and if you're into perfume, it's used so much that, uh, and we're so in Western culture, just used to extracts in our kitchen and what our basic perfumes give us. But get your hands on the note, it'll change your perfume experience. All of these, all seven of these, will change your perfume journey, your fragrance journey, and enhance it uh, to a T. It has mine. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much. You guys can kind of see where my head's coming from in my reviews now a little bit. Uh, I'm a novice. I don't pretend to be any professional at all. I'm learning with you guys. I'm just documenting my learning and my fumbles on here. And I thought this would be a fun video. I'm trying to get these ones shorter. I just, I start talking about ingredients and I can go off. I mean, we could have labeled 20 ingredients here. We could take each one of these deeper. I mean, these aren't even my favorites. These are just the basics you get your nose on and get familiar with and then dive into your favorites. I mean, outside of ambergris, oud, sandalwood I have an appreciation for, but maybe those are my three, but woods, I don't know. I love woods. I almost give me any other. I love vibrant, soft, every kind of wood on there. I could talk woods go off four hour video on that alone. <laughs> Rose is definitely not my favorite floral, but it's an important one to learn. Um, I've appreciated patchouli. Same thing. I hated patchouli until I went down my patchouli road. That's the video, guys. I hope I'm helping you. I don't know if it's going to be fun. I don't know. We'll see. I'm putting it out there. I'm just docu. I, th I thought it'd be a creative way of how I got started and, and got deeper into composition and learning about my perfumes and enjoying them more and even starting my layering process and being creative and just doing stuff outside the box that's the video guys peace out have a good weekend i gotta get out of here this has gotten longer of course than i wanted because of the redo peace out be blessed